Hey, this is Dino from Google, and today I'm going to show you how to create a SOAP pass-through proxy in Apigee. So we'll open up the Apigee UI, we'll go into the proxies list, and we'll create a new proxy. We'll just select reverse proxy, and we're going to call this SOAP temp convert pass-through. And uh, the endpoint for that is a kind of public SOAP service that is available on the internet. Uh, without further authentication, uh, it's at that address. Um, so we're going to call. We're going to make this a pass-through proxy. It's not going to enforce an API key or token. It's not going to do cores. It's not going to do any of this other stuff. It's really a simple pass-through proxy. So what happens with Apigee when you create a pass-through proxy? The um, this is the base path. Any request that comes in carrying um, more than that base path um, that, that what's past that base path is called the path suffix and that gets appended to the um, URL for the target uh, in this case we don't want that to happen so what I want to do is um, add a new policy and this is going to be an assign message policy um, and we're going to call it um, um, disable copy path suffix. I'm going to use that for the display name and the name. We'll create that. And that is going to be, um, let's see, we don't want any of that. We just want a set. Uh, sorry, just an assign variable is what I meant. So we're going to delete all this assign variable, special name here, um, target copy path suffix. And the value will be false. So what does that do? It just tells Apigee don't append the path suffix that you get on the inbound request to the um, upstream request. All right, so we want that policy. And we need to attach that in the request preflow for the target. So I've selected the target endpoint. Step um, name, and it's am case is important, copy path suffix. That's the thing we just created. OK. So let's close that out. Uh, sorry, step, and we'll close out the request element. Okay, looking good. So now we have this policy uh, to disable a pending path. Let's let's see what else we um, would like to do. Um, I think that's all we need to do. Uh, actually, at this point, um, I think we can deploy that. I'll deploy Vision One into my environment. That takes a little while, uh, but that's done. Now we're going to flip over to the debug tab and start a debug session for this particular proxy. At this point, I would like to invoke a request. So I'm going to flip over to my terminal, and I have a request. So what we're doing is invoking uh, my endpoint with the base path of that proxy. We're passing in um, some SOAP. So that's the right content type. This is a SOAP 1.2 uh, body. That's what it looks like for this uh, particular simple request. So when I send that in, you can see what I get back is um, the Fahrenheit to Celsius response. Uh, and it looks like 75 degrees Fahrenheit is about 23.89 in Celsius. If I flip back over to my debug tab, you can see this is the transaction that I sent in. So this is my request that I sent in from my um, for my terminal, and there's the body that I sent in. Um, this is the policy that sets that variable. Um, and then we invoke the upstream system with basically the same 
payload and the same headers that I sent into Apogee. That invokes the upstream system. And then you can see the response is received from that upstream. Uh, and then there are no policies on the response flow. So um, that response just gets sent right back to uh, the client. Um, and that is what we saw in the terminal. So that is how you can create a simple SOAP to SOAP pass through API proxy in Apigee. That's not really that useful. Um, it may be useful if you've got a portfolio of services and you want to use Apigee as a common entry point into um, a variety of different services, regardless of where they're hosted. Uh, that's a good use of Apigee. Uh, you may also want to add some additional policies in um, to verify thing to do things like uh, authentication, like verifying an API key or verifying an OAuth token um, or a signature on that SOAP payload and so on. Uh, so those are all possible things that you can do, uh, additions to the simple pass-through proxy that I showed you. Uh, and whether you're going to use those depends on your requirements. I hope this has been helpful. Till next time, keep it digital.